fruits and types of fruits. Remember, a fruit is a ripened ovary. Now, fruits are, are come of in different shapes and forms. And they are classified into several types depending on a number of factors. First, we can have the nature of the ovary wall, that is of the fruit wall. If it is succulent, that is one in which the pericarp is fleshy and juicy with distinct three walls, the outer exocarp, middle mesocarp, and the inner endocarp. For example, like mango or orange, where you have the distinct outer epicarp, the white mesocarp, and the inner endocarp that consists of juice-filled hairs. So these two are examples of succulent fruits, also known as juicy fruits. What characterizes them is that in the pericarp, there are three distinct walls. The other type of fruits are the dry fruits in which the pericarp is dry and the three layers are not distinguishable. The three layers are not distinguishable. There are two types of dry fruits. You have the indehiscent fruits, the ones that do not split at all, like the akins here, the nut, the samaras, these are example caryopsis, these are examples of the indehiscent. And then we have the dehiscent fruits, in which upon drying up, the pericarp splits, thereby releasing the seeds within. So that the two types of dry fruits, the dehiscent and the indehiscent. Fruits can also be classified in a number of ways. There are many three categories of fruits. One, we have the simple fruits. Now, simple fruits are derived from a single flower in which the gynoesium may be monocarpus. That is, the gynoesium of the flower may be monocarpus, that is, there's only a single carpet, or the single flower may have a syn carpus gynoesium, that is, there are several fused carpels. That is the first class of fruits, ones that develop from a single flower. So these make up the single or the simple fruits. Then the second category are the aggregate fruits. Aggregate fruits develop from a single flower in which there are several couples. There are several couples that are free. Many couples that are free. In other words, the gynoesium is apocarpus. Apocarpus a gynoesium. Now, in the aggregate fruit, each carpel develop into an individual fruit. Of course, with the other parts of the flower, like the stamens, withering and falling off in time. So, each carpel, each free carpel develops into an independent fruit. Example of aggregate fruits include the strawberry. Now, in the strawberry, it's interesting in that it is the 
receptacle that swells up and becomes succulent with the individual fruits. These are the individual fruits that appear as tiny particles known as the pips on the surface. It is a receptacle that has become succulent and swollen. Then the individual fruits are these ones here. Another example of aggregate fruits is the lantana. Lantana and the many other berries. We have the blackberry where the individual fruits are so distinct. So in collectiveness, they make up an aggregate fruit. So remember in the aggregate fruits, the flower is single and it consists of an apocapus gynoesium and each couple develops into an individual fruit. The third category or class of fruits are the multiple fruits. Multiple fruits develop from an inflorescence of flowers. An inflorescence consists of many flowers that are joined to a common stalk. And each flower will then develop into an individual fruit. It's not that as the ovary matures, the ovaries of the individual flowers mature, they become succulent, and they get fused. So this is the internal structure. This is a common stalk. And attached to the common stalk of the individual flowers, these individual flowers develop into individual fruits, which then become fused as they become succulent. So externally, the fruit appears as one big one. But internally, the individual fruits are fused. An example is the pineapple fruit. It's a good example of the multiple fruits. Now, let's look greater details at the simple fruits. Remember, simple fruits are developed from a single flower. And this single flower may consist of one couple or several couples that are fused. And simple fruits may be succulent or dry. We say in succulent fruits, the wall, that is the pericarp, consists of three distinct layers, the endocarp, which is the innermost, the middle mesocarp, and the outermost epicarp or exocarp. These make up the pericarp. Then the, there's always the seed in the middle. So these are the succulent fruits. The pericarp is usually juicy or fleshy, especially the endocarp or mesocarp, depending on the nature of the fruit. Dry fruits, on the other hand, consist of pericarps that are dry. And within the pericarp, the three layers, that is the endocarp, the mesocarp, and the epicarp, are not distinguishable. And then the pericarp will enclose one or more seeds. Now, let's look at examples of these succulent fruits. There are three categories of succulent fruits. One is the berry. Examples include the orange, tomato, and purple. The droop, that include mango, avocado, and the coconut. And then the palm, which includes the apple fruit. Examples of berries include the citrus fruits such as the lemon, the orange, and also others such as the tomato and the purple. What all these fruits have in common and what characterizes the berry is that they are formed from fused couples and the ovary is fleshy, juicy, and 
Tim's Kind. And it contains several seeds. There are several seeds that are found within the fruit. So you can see in the lemon, you can see in the tomato, there are several fruits. And in the popo, in fact, there are numerous fruits. So what defines a berry is that it's made up from fused couples. And the pericarp is fleshy or juicy. In the citrus fruit, such as the lemon and the orange, it is the endocarp that is fleshy. Same case with the tomato, the endocarp is fleshy. This is the mesocarp, and that is the outer exocarp. In the popo, you have the thin exocarp, then the mesocarp, and the fleshy endocarp. So these are examples of berry fruits. Then the drupes consist of the mango, the avocado, and the coconut. A drupe is formed from a single couple. That is, the flower is has a single carpel and therefore the genoesium is monocapus. In the mango, it's another example of droop, avocado is another example of the coconut. So the endocarp of droops, the endocarp of droops are hard. They are hard, and this is especially so in the coconut where the endocarp is stony. Even in the mango, the endocarp is hard, and in the avocado is hard, though not as hard as in the coconut. The mesocarp is fleshy, like in the mango, in the avocado, but in the coconut, the mesocarp is initially fleshy, then as it, the fruit matures, it dries and becomes fibrous. Fibrous and it is air-filled. Then the third category of succulent fruits is the palm. The palm. Now the palm is a, is a succulent fruit in which the fleshy or succulent part is derived from the receptacle of the flower. And for this reason, the palms are sometimes referred as false fruits. Because they do not, the fleshy part does not develop from the ovary wall but instead it develops from the receptacle. So the receptacle becomes swollen and juicy. Example is the apple. That is the receptacle that becomes swollen and juicy. I see. So this is a photograph of an apple and this is a longitudinal section of the apple showing the swollen receptacle. This is a flower stalk and these are the remains of the style. Because the style, that is the apex of the couple, does not completely disappear. So whereas the other parts of the flower dry and fall off like the corolla, the stamen, and the calyx, these do dry and fall off, but the style and bits of the stigma are persistent and they can be seen in the mature apple fruit. Now let us now turn to the dry fruits. As mentioned earlier, there are two categories of dry fruits. The dehiscent, those that split on drying up, that is the perica becomes dry at maturity it splits or dehyces, releasing the seeds. Examples of dehyscent fruits are, include the legumes or pods, 
follicles, schizo cup, and the capsule. The indehiscent, on the other hand, consists of fruits with dry pericaps, which never split at maturity. They include the akin, caryopsis, and the sipsella. So we look at examples of each category of dry fruit, starting with the dehiscent fruits. The legumes, or the pods, include the peas, the soya beans, and the common bean pods. So here is a pod. On drying, the ovary, that is the pericarp, splits. So a pod is formed from a single carpel and it splits along two edges. So what characterizes the pod is that it splits along two edges. There are two lines of weaknesses. These lines of weaknesses are known as suches. So a pod or a legume splits along two edges, scattering the seeds. And in this way, helps in the dispersal of the seeds. Follicles are the other examples of dehiscent fruits. A follicle is formed from one carpel and it splits along only one edge, like the follicle of the jacaranda. There's one edge, it splits along one edge, releasing the seeds from within. Another type of uh, in the dehiscent fruits is the schizo cup. The schizo cup. Now the schizo cup this is spelling there. Now the schizo cup, for example, of the desmodium. Let's write correctly here, the schizo cup. For example, the desmodium schizocarp consists of develops from one carpel. In fact, it is very similar to the pod, only that there are several compartments. The schizocarp consists of several compartments, and each compartment is known as a medicap. and it contains one seed. So each part is known as a mericap containing one seed. Now, the schizocarps splits into several compartments, into several mericap, and each mericap contains one seed. And like the pod which splits along the two edges like that, this one splits transversely, separating the individual seeds. So example is the desmodium, the desmodium. Then you have the capsule. Capsule develops from several fused couples. And a capsule, for example, like in the poppy plant, splits transversely at the top. This is one capsule. And this capsule splits at the top, releasing seeds. So here you have a photograph of capsules, they have pores at the apex. This pores split open, releasing the many seeds. So these are the many seeds that release are released from the capsule, for example, of the poppy. Then we have the indehiscent fruits the indehiscent fruits. These do not split. A 
upon drying. In the hyacinth fruits, do not split upon drying. They include an akin. An akin is a fruit that contains one seed and the ovary wall is separated from the seed. For example, in the sunflower, these are several fruits of the sunflower known as akin. Within each fruit, there is one seed and that seed, the seed coat is not fused to the pericarp. It's separated. Then the caryopsis, caryopsis, in the caryopsis, there is also one seed. In the caryopsis, there is one seed, but the seed coat is fused to the pericarp. For example, in the maize grain, barley grains, and the wheat grains. Then there is the sipsella. In the sipsella, this is one seeded fruit in which the calyx persists to form a parachute of hairs. These are hairs or may form hooks. Either way, the hairs and the hooks help in the dispersal of the fruit. So example includes the fruit of the sankas and the fruit of the blackjack or beaten's pilosa. So this is a collection of fruits and here are the individual fruits. You can see this is the body of the fruits and at the apex there are the hooks that aid in the dispersal of the fruits.